This is the sad state of my yard right now. The porch is a disaster. We've been having storms. We've been having winds. We've been having rain. And it looks like I haven't cleaned it in weeks because I haven't cleaned it in weeks. So today I'm gonna do that first because I wanna start some peppers and tomatoes for the spring. And to be honest with you, I should have started them back in December, but I was just so busy. We all got sick. I feel like almost the entire month of December, each of us was sick one week after the other. Achoo. 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 But it's a whole new year, baby. So let's get started. Please do not let me find any unwanted critters. I need a broom. Where's my broom? I snuck out before the kittens could find me because Eden doesn't have his little bandana on. And I'm scared that I won't be able to find him without it. But they're just staring at me. <laughs> How will? She thought we wouldn't notice. Outside? Okay, come on. I found a backup collar for Mr. Eden Yeager. Look at him. Mikasa? Mikasa? Where is this girl? Oh, there she is. There she is, sweet angel. Don't mind this, this is a microwave that we're getting rid of because it doesn't work. It started sparking, but bulk trash doesn't come for a few more weeks. So in the meantime, it's just gonna be chilling here. Oh my gosh, look at all this trash. Okay. All right, all right. Oh, that looks so much better. Now that the porch looks a little bit better, I'm gonna tidy up my potting bench. This gorgeous thing is from Gardner Supply Company. They sent it to me and I love it so much. When I first set it up, I had to stop myself from eating lunch and dinner out here because it's just so pretty and I get a good view of everything in the garden. I'm cleaning this just to get it dirty again in a few minutes. The cool thing about this potting bench is that it comes with this bin right here, which I use to mix up soil for my seedlings. That way it's a one pot dish. You can buy seed starting mix, you can buy potting mix. I honestly never use seed starting mix. I've never bought it before, I never will. I just like to mix up my own soil and use that. I know sometimes people will sift it to get it really nice and fine. I don't do that, I'm gonna tell you why. And maybe this doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Maybe it doesn't even make sense to me, but this is the way I think about it. In the garden, the strongest plants I've ever had are the ones that self-seed. The ones that I tend to baby a lot, oftentimes underperform for me, or they'll stay alive, but compared to the ones that have been through it, they're just okay. Does that mean I might get a lower germination rate? Probably, but honestly, I don't really ever have trouble with things germinating rarely if ever into my seedling tray i'm gonna add three ingredients right now first we need a base you can use coconut core if you can find coconut core and if it's in your budget it however is very difficult for me to find here where i live especially in bulk so usually i go with peat moss peat moss and coconut core are both going to be very good at absorbing water and retaining moisture which is good because you don't want that soil to dry out immediately but that's my base so let's add that in we don't measure over in this household, so I just eyeball it. Next, we need nutrients. That looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna add some compost. The compost is gonna add some nutrition to those seedlings because if you just put them in straight peat moss, yeah, they'll start growing, but then what are they gonna eat? You can use any compost you'd like, but I tend to stick with mushroom compost. Even better than this is homemade compost. And like, look at this. It's got some longer pieces. Usually, most people would probably sift that out. I'm just gonna leave it in there. May the odds be ever in your favor and also survival of the fittest, am I right? Last, we need structure. Peat moss and compost alone is all right. It's a good start, but I want that soil to have more aeration. I want it to be a little bit more fluff and loose and crumbly. That way the seedlings can pop through. So for that, I could use two things. The first is perlite, which looks like this. This is going to absorb some of that water, so it's gonna retain moisture, but it's also going to aerate the soil. This I really like using for seed starting, 
but sometimes I also use Vermiculite. This is Vermiculite. So its texture is very similar to perlite. So for smaller containers, I like using vermiculite because during the hotter days of the year, those tend to dry out a lot faster. But for larger containers that have a ton of soil in them, I like using perlite because the soil can easily compact in those. And because there's so much of it and it's heavy, sometimes I feel like it gets waterlogged or it, not that it does, but it can get waterlogged. My first season gardening, I didn't have the soil consistency down. So if I overwatered my 25 gallon containers, the soil started going anaerobic and you could smell it. It smells like egg almost. Oh, it's, it's a really nasty smell. But after I went in and repotted literally basically all of my trees and added some more perlite and vermiculite, the soil is perfectly fine now because it's actually able to drain through and it has that aeration in it. I'm not gonna add this vermiculite in there. I'm actually gonna use this to top all of my seedlings and I'll show you that later. Usually I either mix it with my hands or with the trowel, but I'm used to making tortillas, so sometimes this is a little bit easier for me. So that's looking pretty good, but I honestly want a little bit more of that perlite in there. Now I want to get this nice and moist. Do you also hate that word? I kind of like it moist. Anyways, the reason I want it to be moist is that way whenever I pop my seeds in there, they're immediately going to come in contact with moisture and that will help them start to germinate versus if you fill up your container and this soil is dry, you add water on top, that peat moss is hydrophobic which means that it doesn't want the water. It doesn't want to be friends. It likes being on its own. You kind of have to force them to get along, but if you uh -uh. introduce the water now and you force them to get along and then you add the seed, then you're going to have a better chance of germination. And to get the soil wet, I'm going to be using rainwater. Cause it's free 99 right now, baby. I want my soil to form a ball sort of like this and then be able to crumble easily. I don't want it dripping wet. The bottom portions right here are a little too wet. My bad. So I'm gonna add a little bit more peat moss. So if I squeeze, I can form a ball, but it can also fall apart loosely. So my soil is ready to go. Now, remember how I said, I don't mind if the seeds struggle. If it's chunks like this big, then yeah, maybe I don't want them in there, but anything else like this is fine. I mean, that's not a big deal to me. Believe it or not, these are not even all of my seeds. I still have several other containers, but today we're just gonna work on tomatoes and peppers. The most difficult part about this entire process for me is just choosing which ones I want to plant. Because if it were up to me, I'd plant everything, but I don't have enough space for everything, so I have to make a choice. For the sweet peppers, I do want to start a bunch of them, honestly, because I don't have many in the garden right now, and I need more. So here's the categories I have right now. Indeterminate tomatoes, determinate tomatoes, and these also have some dwarf tomatoes in here. Tomatillos, sweet peppers, and hot peppers. I'm just gonna tell you guys some of the coolest varieties that I plan on starting. Aji Charapita is one of the hot peppers that I have not been able to grow. I have been through maybe about three packs of these. Every single time I'm able to get them to germinate, they grow their true leaves. They get about three inches tall and then the sun takes them out or something else takes them out, but I have not been successful in growing these for about a year now. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! 
and then I'm gonna grow some chiltepin wild chili pepper. I grew up eating chiltepin as a kid and I love the flavor, but they're also very expensive. The only place that I'm able to find them is Food City and they're expensive. A small bag with maybe like 20 little dried peppers is like three, four dollars. So I need to grow some myself. And the only other one that looks really cool that I'm excited to grow is called Aji Cachucha. And it looks like this. It kind of reminds me of a little hat. For the sweet peppers, oh my gosh. I want to grow every single one of these. First is the Echi Uda pepper. This one I want to grow just because it looks really nice. I don't have a whole lot of bell peppers growing in the garden. The only ones that I've successfully been able to grow are purple ones, and those don't taste the best. They are really beautiful, but taste-wise, they are mediocre. Arroz con pollo pepper. I heard Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm raving about these a few years ago, and they finally came back in stock. They're supposed to be a Cuban seasoning pepper, and they're not spicy at all, but supposedly very, very delicious. The yellow monster pepper. Look at this thing. That's a beauty right there. I want to grow things that are nice and bright in the garden because if I'm going to grow food, I want to grow really cool food. Usually I don't buy yellow peppers at the store. They are really good in salads, but I usually tend to go for the red ones just because those are the most flavorful. My kids love them and they can go in just about everything. Okay, see, I'm going to wind up going through all of these sweet peppers. Are you okay with that? Because if you have somewhere to be, you need to cancel those appointments because we need to go over all of these guys. The next one is habanada pepper. This one looks like a habanero, but it's not spicy. It's supposed to be really nice and sweet. Murasaki purple pepper. I'm telling you, this year is gonna be the year where I'm gonna have color everywhere in the garden. Usually, I have green stuff everywhere, but I want purples and reds and oranges and yellows. I think that's gonna be beautiful. And imagine, imagine the harvest baskets. Oh, my mouth is watering just thinking. Next is the shishito pepper. I have been able to grow this one and it tastes really good, but mine don't get as large as the ones that I see other people harvesting. I don't know why, do, they, do you not like me? That could also be the fact that the first year peppers usually don't turn out as great as the second year peppers. And where I live, I'm able to overwinter my pepper plants. I have some that are a couple years old. Well, like two years old. I just keep pruning them back and overwintering them. And so I'm gonna start a couple more of these because the flavor is exceptional and the plants that I already do have will probably produce better this year. The Lace of Pepper, look how gorgeous that is. This one is supposed to be the sweetest of all the peppers. It's got a really thick flesh and it's high yielding. I just think it looks beautiful. It kind of looks like something I would find in a Valentine. For the tomatoes, I have so many varieties. I'm just gonna tell you the ones that I'm super excited to grow and ones that I think you should probably grow as well, if you want, of course, because I will never tell you what to do. The first is a Sun Gold Cherry Tomato. This one, I'm gonna be totally honest, okay? For me, it has not performed the best. Every time I plant them, the vines are just very bald for the longest time. They take forever to take off, and then once they do, they don't produce as much as some of my other cherry varieties, but the flavor, oh my God. The flavor on these is exceptional to this day. I have not tried a singular other tomato, cherry tomato at least, that tastes nearly as good as this one. It is just outstanding and one that I plan to grow forever and ever and ever. And I should probably also order more seeds because I don't know how many I have left. Do I even have some left? Oh yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna order some more today probably. Berry's Crazy Cherry is one that just looks Fabulous. I have seen some of these clusters online and oh my gosh, these are so productive. They kind of remind me like of a bunch of grapes. The clusters are just massive. I've never tried them myself though, so I can't tell you anything about the flavor, but the productivity of these is supposed to be exceptional. The Dr. Witchy's tomato is one that I have to grow. My husband and my kids are some of the pickiest tomato eaters. They don't really like tomatoes. If I put them in any food, it has to be cooked. Otherwise, if they're like in a sandwich or something, they'll just pick them out. But this is the only tomato that my husband requested that he ate raw with just a little bit of salt sprinkled on top and he's never done that before. And he kept asking me if there was any more. So I need to plant a couple of these vines. Brat Atomic Grape is one I really like simply because the color is just so stunning. It's a gorgeous variety and the flavor is really good, but I feel like you have to pick it at the right time because if I picked it too early, it was, it was not ready yet. And if I picked it too late, 
it was a little too ready so it has to be picked at the right time but it's so beautiful i want to try again this year just to give it a fair shot we could be here all day you guys and i don't think you want that for the dwarf varieties i have absolutely zero idea how any of these taste i bought these seeds from victory seeds and i have several of these vines growing in the garden so we'll just have to see how they perform and i'll give you my thoughts on them probably at the end of the year the only seeds from this category that i am absolutely positively sure i have to grow are the ground cherries. One thing you need to know about ground cherries though that I found out a little too late is that you cannot eat them when they are green. You need to let them get ripe because if you eat them when they're green, they're toxic. I had no idea. I was going out there and tasting them and being like, ah, oh, these don't taste very good. I never thought to look it up. I heard somebody mention it in a YouTube video and then I looked it up and I was like, oh, wait until they ripen wait until they fall off of the plant but when they do they taste like candy i feel like the taste is very sweet it's got a hint of pineapple a hint of tomato a hint of just sweetness and sugar i don't really know how to explain these but they are fantastic i'm gonna start several of these because my kids love them and last year they would fight over the couple that we would find on the floor so this year i need to grow tons of them this one is tomatillo de milpa i got these from native seed search this one specifically came from a strain that grows wild in Mexican farm fields on big sprawling plants and they're smaller but stronger flavored than store-bought tomatillos and then this one is called a well, I don't know how to say this Tep, tepehuan, tepehuan tomatillo I think it's small tasty green fruit on weedy plants from Nabogame Chihuahua a remote mountainous region mm. so anyways I'm gonna grow those two and also a purple one the thing to keep in mind with tomatillos, if this is your first time growing them, is you need more than one plant. These need to cross pollinate with each other in order to produce fruit. If you only grow one plant, you might get little to no fruit. So grow a couple and just let them sprawl. These will probably need a trellis though because they tend to go wild. And also to be honest with you, I have not successfully grown any. I've grown a couple, but I feel like the harvests have been so small compared to the plants. I'm hoping that because the other tomatillos didn't perform for me, that these right here from Native Seed Search will because they're adapted to conditions that are more suitable for my climate. I could say that I washed this, but we would both know I'm lying. Look, all of the plants that I started here didn't have any disease. Should I probably still wash them? Yeah, probably. Am I gonna? No, absolutely not. Maybe one day I will have an issue and I'll regret it and then I'll start doing it. But for right now, this just works for me. So I'm just gonna fill my tray with a little bit of soil and I'm gonna do that for every single cell. Now that I have my cells ready to go, I'm gonna take some tags. Whenever I'm transplanting the plants into the garden beds, I use wooden tags, but whenever I'm using the cells, I use these so that I can cover the trays up with a humidity dome. And I think today is the seventh or the eighth. And then I'm just gonna put my label right here. I think I'm gonna start two of each plant. For the ground cherries, I'm gonna start six of each plant because these don't grow very tall. They just grow kind of wide and I can grow them in containers. In an ideal world, I would be able to find all of my tools and not misplace them. But unfortunately, I can't find my dibber, so I'm just gonna use a pencil. In every single cell, I'm gonna make a small indentation. You don't want it to become too deep because if you make it too deep and you drop the seed in, the seed might start to germinate, but then it has to make its way all the way up through that soil to finally find the light. And you might lose that seed in the process. So I'm gonna start with the ground cherries. The, this is the Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Oh my gosh, I'm almost out. I should have ordered more. I thought I had ordered more. I'm gonna place about two seeds in each cell. Could I do more than two seeds? Absolutely. But I think two is a good amount. That way, um, in case one doesn't germinate, I have a shot of the other one taking. If I plant too many, I might just waste seeds. And if all of them germinate, I can't plant everything. I'm just gonna drop two seeds in each cell. When the seeds are this small, sometimes I don't even fully cover them with soil. I'll just sprinkle a little bit loosely. I don't pack it down. And instead what I do is I take a little bit of vermiculite and I sprinkle it over the top. The reason I do that is because when this vermiculite absorbs water, it's gonna retain some of that moisture to help the seeds germinate, but it's still light enough that it's not compacting on top of the seed. It's not preventing it from popping up. 
And I think this is honestly what's changed the game for me and why my seeds are able to germinate so easily. And then I'm gonna repeat the same process for every other cell. There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. There's a new day to wash away the pain. There's a new day to take away your sorrow. And the old ways get washed out by the rain. Because I've pre-moistened the soil, I'm just gonna lightly water the top. During the day, it's nice and warm here in Arizona but at night it can get pretty cold still. So I'm gonna cover it with a humidity dome to help trap in some of that heat and also to stop any birds or anything else from eating my little seeds before they sprout. This is the humidity dome that I'm using right now. It's from the Greenhouse Megastore. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not the best quality or at least not anymore because it just gets so hot here that it made all of the plastic sort of warp a little bit. And I was hoping that it would sort of snap into place that way it doesn't go anywhere. But when it gets too windy, it can fly off. So what I do is I set it on top and you can see that there's some gaps here. Then I take these little, what are these called? Clips, uh, office clips, bought them at the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of like 10 or 12 for a dollar, a dollar 25 now. And I just clip the four sides. When I cover them up every single day, in the morning, I will come out here and I'll uncover it. And then right before the sun goes down, I'll cover them up again. And then once my seedlings start to take off, I won't use the humidity dome anymore. And they should be good until they're ready to transplant. And that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you might also like this one where I built a pretty badass garden trellis. Or you might like this one where I made some uh, rustic garden tags.